GPU rendering has become a big thing in the VFX industry in recent years. GPU speed up rendering in 3D software packages, in video production and give AI calculations the necessary kick. While there are still valued arguments for CPU rendering, see link in the video description, today we're going to take a look at where GPU rendering comes out on top with the flagship of NVIDIA's RTX 3000 series, the MSI RTX 3090 Supreme X. This card is big, it's heavy and it's long. With just under 2 kilograms of combat weight, it includes a whopping 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM and almost 10,500 CUDA cores. Also on board are 82 RTX cores for real-time ray tracing and 328 tensor cores for AI processing, all paired with video output of up to 8K. That alone is quite impressive. However, MSI additionally gives their RTX 3090 the name Supreme X, referring for high quality manufacturing, excellent cooling and stable overclocking capabilities. That sounds like an excellently crafted workhorse, but is this card really made for demanding daily use in a professional environment? MSI advertises the card primarily as a high-end card for gaming, however, MSI's configuration tool Dragon Center also includes settings for a bunch of DCC software such as Adobe, Corel and Autodesk applications. In other words, only in second place. This card is advertised for content creators. So let's find out if this baby is primarily for creative professional use. Instead of just running a few quick benchmarks to get some synthetic performance data, I pushed the 3090 Supreme X to its limits over the past three months with a demanding animation project for Maxon Cinema 4D and Redshift, ending up in 500 hours of non-stop rendering. On top of this long-term test, I did some quick shootouts comparing the performance of the Supreme X with two different cards, an RDX 2080 Ti and an RDX Quadro 5000. For this, I used Ratchet for Cinema 4D again, Neat Video Denoiser, Topaz Gigapixel AI, Topaz Video Enhance AI and Adobe Media Encoder. The workstation I placed this card in is an HP Z840 equipped with 222 core Xeon E5 2696 version for CPUs and 128GB of RAM. In case you're wondering how the 3090 Supreme X fits in there, <coughs> um, yeah, uh, <laughs> let's call it a custom modification to the front fan of the computer case was necessary. So, if you're looking for a real review of the card in daily professional practice, look no further, I've got you covered. First, we turn to the really heavy stuff, the long-term test. To get to know the features and perhaps also the limits of the 3090 Supreme X, I originally created a new animation project called Light is Just Fine, a study on the fascination and fleetingness of everyday light. This animation is based on my project Oberbilk, which some of you probably know as a test scene for Maxon Cinebench. And this is how the new animation Light is Just Fine now looks like. Ich sie noch mal. Riecht das gerade gut. Technically, the scene contains everything that makes a render engine and an artist sweat. Soft diffuse light with corresponding shadows, multiple rough reflections and refractions, caustic, subsurface gathering, depth of field, procedural textures and whatnot. 
Animated trees with highly detailed geometry and a high number of scattered objects for dust fibers and dirt resulted in a scene size of about 10 million polygons. Before I started any rendering, I set the dual BIOS of the 3090 Supreme X to gaming instead of silent at the corresponding switch of the card to get an even better cooling at the small cost of some minor noise. In MSI Dragon Center, I selected the extreme performance scenario and left clock speeds unchanged. Let's have a look at the render times. From wide shot to ultra close up, render times per frame in 1080p varied between 8 and 60 minutes. These differences come from the different proportion of demanding calculations in the image. In the wide shot, for example, soft diffuse light and multiple rough reflections are already apparent as computationally intensive aspects, but the closer the camera approaches, the greater the proportion of these and other highly complex effects get. Since the rendered animation consists of 1075 frames in Full HD, the rendering process also took a whole 21 days on one single 3090 Supreme X, summing up in roughly 500 hours of non-stop rendering. I bet this is by far the toughest professional test you can find about this card anywhere. So let's take a look at the performance during rendering. The RAM of the HP workstation was constantly occupied with around 30 gigabytes. The task manager shows about 22 gigabytes of addressed VRAM. With the Cinema 4D scene opened, Redshift Feedback Displays reports roughly 16.6 gigabytes of VRAM available for Redshift itself. From this, around 2 gigabytes are taken for textures, around 10 gigabytes for rays, and roughly 200 megabytes for caustic photons. So the overall VRAM usage here is roughly 13 gigabytes. By the way, this would already make things quite tight with NVIDIA's competing card RTX 3080 Ti. It has a comparable computing power as the 3090 Supreme X, but the VRAM is limited to 12 GB only. So with 13 GB required for this Cinema 4D scene, the VRAM situation would already be out of core. The noise level during rendering was about 50 decibels. Normally I'm used to higher volumes from powerful workstations during rendering, so this is a really moderate value. The temperature remained permanently between 63 and 81 degrees Celsius and the clock speed was constantly around 1950 MHz. And here both the high build and cooling quality of the card as well as of the HP workstation became noticeable. Therefore it's only logical that a card like the RTX 3090 Supreme X has to be placed in an equally well made workstation for professional use. Okay, 500 hours rendering was a tough one. But hey, on top, I also ran some quick shootouts of the card comparing its performance to two other cards, an RTX 2080 Ti and a Quadro RTX 5000. Let's take a look at the performance during rendering the first frame of the animation lights just fine now, the perspective you might know from Cinebench. As expected, the 3090 Supreme X beats its competitors by far. It completes the tested frame in 7 minutes 51 seconds. The RTX 2080 Ti takes 15 minutes 46 seconds and the Quadro RTX 5000 needs 16 minutes 5 seconds to finish rendering. This is where the raw CUDA power of the Supreme X really kicks in. The RTX 3090 Supreme X contains 82 RTX cores from the current Ampere generation for hardware accelerated rendering of ray traced features such as shadows or reflections, etc. For use in Redshift, this feature has to be actively turned on in the render settings. Only then it provides the results we just saw in the Cinebench perspective. When turned off, rendering gets about 25 to 30 percent slower not only with the 3090 Supreme X, but also with the 2080 Ti and the Quadro RTX 5000. By the way, the Redshift render performance hardly differs between the NVIDIA Game Ready and the NVIDIA Studio drivers being installed. The Studio driver caused a performance gain of just around 2%. This matches the background of the Studio drivers. They are exactly the same as the Game Ready drivers, 
but just with a few days delay due to intensive testing in certain pro apps. So considering Maxon's recommendation to always use the latest version of Redshift with the latest drivers, the use of game-ready drivers is the best choice. Denoising of computer-generated imagery is something I mostly prefer to do in post-production with neat video for Adobe After Effects. In contrast to the optics and altus denoisers built into Redshift, this gives me the opportunity to intervene in the image in real time and, if necessary, selectively. Let's take a look at the performance of the three test cards denoising my animation to QuickTime uncompressed 422, even if there's nothing to denoise there. The 3090 Supreme X completes the sequence in 1 minute 16 seconds, the 2080 Ti in 1 minute 27 seconds, and the RTX 5000 in 1 minute 28 seconds. A similar ratio of results is seen when encoding the animation with Adobe Media Encoder to ProRes 422 HQ. The 3090 Supreme X takes 13.3 seconds, the 2080 Ti takes 15.2 seconds and the RTX 5000 15.5 seconds to encode the sequence. The results of the 2080 Ti and the Quadro RTX 5000 are quite close here, similar to the results from the shootout with Neat Video for After Effects. So it seems there's a correlation here in the CUDA performance of Adobe After Effects and Adobe Media Encoder. Topaz Gigapixel AI is the go-to software for AI-supported upscaling and enhancement of image files. For this, it uses the tensor cores of the RTX cards, of which the 2080 Ti has the most in our shootout with 544 units. So this shootout should be interesting. The task is to upscale the first frame of my animation to 8K resolution. Interestingly, the 3090 Supreme X dominates the field, though it has less tensor cores than the 2080 Ti. It completes the task in 18.4 seconds, the 2080 Ti takes 21.8 seconds and the RTX Quadro 5000 needs 22.5 seconds to complete the image enhancement. The result in Topaz Video Enhance AI is a little different as the software seems to rely a lot more on tensor cores for AI calculations than Gigapixel AI. In this shootout, my animation light is just fine now had to be enhanced to 4K resolution with a built-in AI model Gaia HQ. Here, the 2080 Ti wins closely with its 544 tensor cores. Although these are last generation stack, their sheer number is the decisive factor compared to the Supreme X with 328 current generation tensor cores. But the winning is a real close one. The 3090 Supreme X fulfills the task in 14 minutes 23 seconds, the 2080 Ti scores with 13 minutes 18 seconds and the Quadro RTX 5000 takes 14 minutes 42 seconds. By the way, the NVIDIA Studio Driver website explicitly lists optimal support for Topaz Video Enhance AI, but as expected with Studio Drivers, the performance in the software is not a single bit faster or better compared to the game-ready drivers. By the way, comparing the 3090 Supreme X also with a Quadro, let's shed some light on the claim Quadro for professional use. Or rather ask, what is the advantage of a Quadro in daily practice with Cinema 4D in Redshift? The answer is nothing or not, not more than what you could expect from an equivalent RTX only card. What is true for Cinema 4D and Redshift is also congruent with what of one of the developers of Need Video told me. What matters is the number of CUDA cores, the amount of VRAM and the memory bandwidth. From our experience, GeForce GPUs generally offer higher performance and certainly have a better money to frames per second ratio. And the folks at Topaz Labs said, Quadro cards are considerably more expensive than RTX cards with equivalent performance. Quadro cards are indeed more power efficient and have an excellent heat management, which is essential if you stack them or want to place them in a tiny computer case. 
but a performance boost comes only in applications certified for it, such as CATIA or SOLIDWORKS. Quadro features like ECC RAM, Quadro Sync, Double Precision and whatnot are necessary using, let's say, LED walls or scientific simulation. But performance-wise, for professional work with Cinema 4D and Redshift, Quadro cards offer no advantage over comparably equipped and well-manufactured RTX cards, especially considering the prices, which are usually two or three times higher. What you need for professional daily work with Cinema 4D and Redshift is raw cooler power, RTX cores, lots of VRAM and excellent cooling. The more, the better. Redshift seems to utilize every single CUDA and RTX core on the 3090 Supreme X and therefore speeds up creative iterations remarkably when adjusting shaders, lighting or rendering parameters. Paired with its excellent manufacturing quality and cooling capabilities, this beefy card shouldered the creation of an extensive animation project and rendering 500 hours 24-7 non-stop. On top, it dominates the field in quick shootouts with a bunch of professional DCC software. So, Honestly, I'm pretty impressed. Hopefully, the price situation on the graphics card market will quickly relax to reasonable proportions again so that more artists and studios can make use of this professional grade card. I hope you enjoyed this tough ride with the MSI RTX 3090 Supreme X. So, make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe to this channel. Stay safe. See you.